All right. So welcome to the September 13th, Friday the 13th. September 13, 2024, Long Range Planning Committee meeting. Alan Paul could not be with us today. So uh, I am uh, acting as, as chair. So, uh, Arnie, would you mind? Sure. Uh, Rick Shane. Here. Peter Feilinger. Here. Robin Saunders. Here. <laughs> Portia Hirschman. Here. Julia Fisher. Rachel Hendrickson. Here. Jean Marie Katarina. Here. Ron Anderson. Here. So the voting members. The voting members are Rick, Peter, Robin, and Portia. Okay, <clears throat> excuse, uh, excuse me. Um, minutes from the August 9, 2024 Orange Planning Committee meeting. Does anybody have any comments or changes for minutes? If not, Chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Peter moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Thanks a lot. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed. So, um, a little a quick um, conflict issue on number three. Uh, my law firm represents the main transportation transportation authority. So, while I'll continue to chair of this item, I won't uh, participate one way or the other in the discussion. I mean, it may in turn. Okay. So. This one, we received a request from um, Tom Hall, town manager, to send out a request for questions from all of our committees. And so I have, I put what we have so far in your packet, but I would, I'm gonna do a hard stop at 8.30 uh, so we can move on and, and before that, if we're done with the item. Um, so we can put together a list of questions and I'll pass those on to Tom and he'll pass those on to MTA. There is a joint meeting on September the 18th next week uh, with MTA and town council. And so um, just asking for input. So I'll share my screen and I'll show you what we have so far. You all see that online? No. You're not sharing. Not yet. No. Oh. How about now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. So this is what we have. Uh, we have some questions about stormwater. We have quite a few questions about the watershed, and low impact development that Robin's provided. These were in your packet. And then we have a question um, that Peter provided about zoning and comprehensive plans. And then we have some questions, seven and eight are new. Uh, Alan sent those in about zoning in the area and incompatible. But just generally, I'm not sure how, if you all had a chance to look at the MTA's website link, um, to really just to get to know a little bit about the project. I'm a little familiar with the project, but not intimately involved with it. Um, but just generally, we do have the running hill zoning in place close by and of course the Reading Hill zoning is dependent on sewer so without that it's pretty much RF out there um, with that that's really what we have in place uh, North Scarborough is set up as a small little village area right now where Roma Joe's is um, yeah so it's pretty open you know, Anything that you all think would be important for council or the town to understand with this sort of project moving forward, we've received quite a bit of opposition, uh, but I do know from just being in the engineering department, planning department, we have also quite a bit of support because there is a traffic issue. We just don't often hear from those folks as much. Um, but I think this is an opportunity to ask questions that may be able to inform both sides a little better. So just looking for any feedback or. Well, you can I say something? 
Just for those who weren't here, the re the only reason I am not there and am on Zoom mm -hmm. is because I couldn't get out of my driveway this morning uh, to get to go to head towards town because um, I was running a little late. Um, and this is a frequent occurrence. And I know people talk a lot about um, congestion, so to speak, but uh, yeah, it's also volume. Um, and I would invite anyone, because I know a lot of people, I, I don't know how many people even come up here to North Scarborough, to be honest with you. Um, so I would just invite anybody to come to North Scarborough. You can come to my house anytime if you want and see traffic that goes by during the day, but uh, any any time um, to come up and see the uh, traffic backups, volume, whatever. So that's... You know where I stand on this, so. Yes, I'm not sure if this relates to the questions, but um, but um, one question I had, it relates to that. I, I'm twice a week up in North Scarborough for doggy daycare, um, full disclosure. And it's during um, what I think are peak traffic times. Mm -hmm. I drop a dog off around 8.30, 9 o'clock, and I pick the dog up around 5, 5.30. Um, I'm just, and it's on 114 there. It's actually quite close to where Jean Marie is. Um, I'm curious as to what the traffic studies have been for 114 in particular, because what I've seen of the of the, the routing of the connector is it doesn't seem like it would reduce or take away from Scarborough residents moving towards North Scarborough or towards the Warren or towards that area on 114 very much. So. I'm, I'm curious to, to understand what sorts of studies were done for 114 in particular and what alternatives were viewed for the 114 congestion, whether there was an alternative of lane expansion or, 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 or um, alternative. I know we've talked in the transportation committee about alternative um, uh, uh, signaling schemes and things and running the road and elsewhere. Um, but I'm just curious about that. Okay. Um, I'm also curious too, I, I had submitted the question about our comp plan and it relates to the comp plans of the surrounding areas. You've got sort of a nexus of, I think it's Scarborough, South Portland, Gorham, Portland. Um, there's a nexus of communities. I, I don't know what their comp plans look like or what their zoning maps are. Um, and we usually don't see cross town zoning maps. Um, you kind of see them by town. So I'm not sure if it's possible in advance of this meeting um, to, to get a view, a, a cross municipality view of the zoning plans and the comp plan um, uh, thought process for that nexus of communities um, just to fill it, that it may be an information gap in, in, in our world. Would, would, that, would that then provide future development well, it would give us an idea of what has already been scoped in the town's mind for that corridor and the areas around that corridor. Um, because right now, for us, North Scarborough is effectively RF um, uh, until, the, the, until, until the sewer gets in, which is not imminent. <laughs> but if, if somebody outside our boundaries were to say, well, we're going to put in a 500-unit apartment complex so we can feed all of this traffic mm -hmm. through, that would impact us that would without impact. any personal benefit to Scarborough. Correct, and it would actually probably create problems for an RF zone district that we know has some watershed issues and, and things like that. So having that knowledge, I think, would be, would be helpful for us in framing Yeah, that. yeah that's a great point, because Gorham is quite a bit planned. Yeah, they do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I, I, I... Yes, you're right. You never see that all together. Correct, yeah. So... Um, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, from a real estate point of view, please know that there are developments. You mentioned Gorham, but there will be developments going in further west, uh, particularly as population um, um, pressures um keep going on i know i've been selling more houses as we go west of 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 uh this of gorham in particular uh so that's going to add to to volume uh on and it's not just 114 it's you know, <coughs> it's beach ridge it's holmes road it's broad turn um but but that being said um 
So we need to be looking at all of those. I'll also add that uh, North Scarborough, and I stand and I stand to be corrected, but Autumn is it North Scarborough itself, the village so-called village area, isn't that zoned village? Yes, there's a small little corner yeah. there. TVC. Right, and then we have next right next to me. I abut the uh, the um, Running Hill zone. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of zones out here. It's not just RF. Mm -hmm. I kind of view the Running Hill zone as a bit aspirational at this point. Um, <laughs> again, yeah. it requires sewer to, to activate, and mm -hmm. yeah, you don't have a sewer capital project of that magnitude. Um, well. There've been there've been a couple of uh, things brought forward that didn't require sewer. So one of them one of them being um, the Amazon warehouse. Believe it or not, they were going to have a self contained system. But there you go. Well, and they were on that odd bit of light industrial zoning that was on the um, <laughs> on the um, the old uh, speedway um, site. So no, that's... no, they uh, they also were looking at this running hill. Oh, okay, gotcha. gotcha. Um, okay, the only other comment I, I had was I thought it was great, for, and, and Robin, thank you for outlining all the questions from an um, environmental compliance perspective and the rest. I, I'll just say a lot of that was Greek to me. Um, I, 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 Robin is so expert, I trust her on everything. I just, I, I'm not sure I know how to comment on whether that's a complete list or, 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 or anything like that. So. But Robin, thanks for doing that. It's, I'm, 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 I'm so inexpert on those matters that I just defer to you on all of that. Are we supposed to narrow the list down to five? You know, you can, but we're past the deadline anyway. So I was just thinking I'll send them on a tongue. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. I think for the purpose, you know, this is just a quick, like, here's our brain dump of the things. Some of these are easy and some of them are not, and they can pick and choose because the meeting's on the 18th. So they're not going to be able to obviously address all of these, but I think Aaron has a question. I just wanted to share with you that the um, SEDCO is also going through this exercise and um, we have had the advantage of meeting jointly with the Gorm Economic Development Corporation to sort of have this discussion. And I think one of the things that came out of this, that, that discussion was there needed to be some pretty plain questions asked before you get into all this detail of traffic studies and things like that. We just need to ask the question of how does this benefit a Scarborough resident? You know, just how does it do that? Does it reduce um, commute time? Does it help us avoid future um, projects? So some of those really just plain spoken questions without an agenda, just how does this help the average person in Scarborough? Um, I think that's sort of the type of thing we're going to ask, as opposed to, you know, the permitting and, and all of that. We, we figure they're not there yet. They haven't got past the, is this, is this good? What is uh, they, they should be. They should be there. I think it's good for them to consider, and yeah. I'm like Robin, they probably should be there yet. Um, but yeah, are they going to talk about that on the 18th? Right. Right. They may never get to that. Tangential to that, and one of the questions I raised for our transportation feedback is how how are we accommodating then pedestrian bicycle traffic? Um, again, 114 is not compatible with other kinds of things. Are we then going to go back and address uh, providing um, ped uh, services um, as a piece of this, or is it just simply going to provide a connector? So DOT has an active transportation project that's running parallel with this. That they just kicked off two months ago. So that's great, but no one knows that except the few of us, so. The other thing, and, and Karen, this relates to your comment on how will this benefit a Scarborough resident? I'm sure the benefits are not uniform. Which, with it, how will it also harm Scarborough sure. residents? Right. So, um, you know, this might, this may, and I'm pulling names out of that here, it might help Jean Marie, but it might screw things up for folks in um, a, a sort of a, a trickle down effect for um, who live in Higgins Beach. Or sure. So, 
understanding the two-sided cost benefit so you know, that for, for the effect on on Scarborough citizens I think is 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 an improvement. What's all about your frame of reference too? Like what you yeah. consider a benefit? Correct. Yep. I I have a question that I'd like them to answer. Um and and this is I sort of know the answer, but I want them to look at it again as why do they feel they have to have exits um, <clears throat> up here on Running Hill and then at 22? Because I also see the upside downside of, of both sides, to be honest with you, but I see a real upside. Why do they just keep it as a total bypass with no exit at, at, exits at all? That would be something for them to answer. Yeah, especially with the Amazon project pulling out, right? Well, yeah, I mean, because you can reach this run, this running hill development can be reached without having the an exit off from the bypass. And I know that my neighbor is up on 22 because I've talked to a lot of my neighbors, as you can well imagine. Um, and some of their concern, the folks who live near our um, Smiling Hill Farm, they're they, they're concerned that if you have an exit there, it's not going to help them because people will get on and off that exit. Um, so I'd like to know what the thinking is by, by having a couple of exits because way back when, I've been involved with this since 1988, um, back when PAX and GP Cog first started looking at this. Um, and just as they did in Gorham, the only exits on that Gorham bypass are that were the so-called natural exits where you've got the roads where they did the roundabouts and I, right off the top of my head I can't think of the names of the roads that go through there um, but the intent was to just move the traffic through and it's worked really well um, so that would be one of the things I'd like to know and I do plan to ask them that on Wednesday. Anything else? Yeah, uh, Autumn, to the point that <clears throat> Karen was making that uh, MTA may not be that far yet on the environmental uh, compliance standards. I'd like to ask if they're not that far, why not? Because some of these permits require years to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Bob, I just want to clarify. I'm, wherever they are in the process, they haven't necessarily answer these basic questions for the community, for the community, if they want support from the community. And they're not basic they questions. Ask they're ask very questions. complex issues that need to be looked at very carefully. They're not it, basic. It, they have been, Rob, and I can tell you they have been addressing them now. I'm not an engineer or environmental engineer. Uh, I do know they've been working very closely with the Army Corps of Engineers and um, DEP. Um, but the whole thing is you do all this work and and whatever up front, then you apply for the permits. And I know they've never had any intention of applying for permits until the earliest I heard uh, was next summer. But I think that's being pushed back a bit. Um, but I do know, I do know that they have been working on that, the extent of which I don't know, but in order to even get the path that they got, because one of the paths that I know the Army Corps of Engineers suggested, well, two, two paths I'll tell you about. One was right smack dab through the middle of running, uh, of, uh, Smiling Hill Farm. That wasn't going anywhere. And then another one earlier was to make 114 a four lane highway which as you can well imagine, those of us on 114 weren't thrilled with that. When they looked at, there were 75 houses that would have to be taken by eminent domain. Uh, that that was, and this was way early. Um, they were like, uh, yeah, no, that doesn't make sense either. So, um, so yeah, I, there's I, a I lot more there. Up, but the, and, but the, the, and the Turnpike Authority, I give them all the blame in the world, they have not been good at communicating what they've done and haven't done. So I, I um, without giving away my hand, I was the Turnpike's environmental consultant for 10 years. I negotiated, ah. 
I negotiated their permits with DOT, MTA, and DEP, and Army Corps. And based on my review of what they have so far, they're relying on their MOA with DEP, MOA, Memorandum of Agreement. And what I'm looking for is whether or not they feel like they're exempt from these requirements or how they plan to meet these requirements <clears throat> in consultation with DEP. Yeah. So there's a big difference there. They're, they need to start negotiating now. And I don't, and I don't disagree with you, Robin. That's good info. All right. Anything else on this one? All right. We're going to move on, Mr. Chair. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> our next item on the agenda is uh, uh, further discussion and recommendation to the Ordinance Committee concerning the uh, local rules of the network board limited discussions. Applicable standards and license requirements. So this one we talked about last time. I am requesting a recommendation if you all are ready for it. The packet um, just <laughs> has language for the mobile food vendor court. We took away the site. So this is really just allowing a new use, a mobile food vendor court use that goes through our site plan process. And then there are specific performance standards for each of those um, for that new use. And so I'll share my screen again and we'll go. One <clears throat> okay, here we are. So this is uh, just a little bit abbreviated from our last time. So we have the mobile food vendor definition and the mobile food vendor court. I took out last time, I gave you sort of a collection of things. Um, so I took out all the duplicates and narrowed down the definition. Um, so the mobile food vendor, it's a vehicle trailer, cart or stand designed and constructed to transport, prepare, sell, or serve food and capable of being moved. And then it will be subject, they will be subject to the zoning ordinance plus uh, site plan review and the license requirements. So this is, it's a small change, but it, it follows several ordinances that we have to amend. So the mobile food vendor court, again, all we're talking about for this process is a collection of two or more mobile food vendors in a common outdoor plaza. So Karen Martin uh, was awesome and she put together a survey last Friday. We sent that out. Um, we're going to send it out again and remind everyone we haven't gotten a lot of feedback, but we sent it out to a list of all the restaurants in town just to get some feedback and input. Um, so we're hoping to get more of that before we get to ordinance committee. We probably also would like to have a, maybe a, a Zoom public info meeting, acknowledging that restaurants have a lot of time constraints. Um, so we can just get everybody in the room. We're still working on setting up the time for that, probably late September. Ordinance committee that I'm striving to get on. So, because Jay Marie will be there still, and I <laughs> can take advantage of having an ordinance committee, because I know November and December will be difficult to get anything through um we're thinking the beginning of october or late september for a zoom meeting so at this point uh, the mobile food vendor court would be permitted in all of our non-residential districts so i've just straight across the board allowed it in tdc 234 highest parkway cpd um, and if you all see that we should change that or scale that back a bit, open to that conversation for sure. Uh, the mobile food vendor court 
review authority. This doesn't go into an ordinance. This is just for information. So the planning board will have site plan review, and then the town clerk and town council will have the license review. So the way it works, if I were the owner of a court, I would go to the planning board and I would get my eight pad sites approved. And then each Porsche has a food truck and Rick has a food truck. They would go to the clerk, get their license, and then they can be on my court. So that's how that would work. But if you had multiple courts and I got a license, I could be in any one. You of could those. go to any one of them. Correct. You only have to get <clears throat> one license. And you can just on your application state where you're going to your approved food court. <laughs> um, so in the site plan requirements, oh, sorry. we have um, just pretty general information. I did get some feedback for uh, the word permanent because I think we talked last time some of these might have temporary electrical hookups. Um, because of the nature of how long they may last, or they may just be a trial period. So I did get a request to strike the word permanent here and here for restroom. And again, I think that would all come up with the site plan review process. So it's up for further discussion, but it wouldn't be required. It's permanent. I might be imagining this, but we talk about for performance standards, a minimum number of parking spaces available per per vendor site. Yes, we do. Okay. And those are coming up. Those are coming up. Okay. Yeah. So this is just the general site plan requirements. The way I'll actually construct the ordinance is that it will be a little. Most site plans have. A really lengthy list of things they have to apply, mm -hmm. uh, include. And so that list will be a little bit smaller for these. They'll have sort of an abbreviated list of requirements. Will those be in the performance standards though, or that will that be separate in the in a different ordinance? So the performance standards belong in the zoning ordinance. Yep. And then the site plan requirements belong in chapter 405B. Okay. <laughs> so this is a collection of all of it. Um, and then I'll put it in the right places. Okay, gotcha. So the performance standards themselves, we have, these will go in the zoning district. Um, we have that each food vendor pad is equipped with electrical connections. We added use of fuel power generators is prohibited. So if you do solar or something else, that's okay. And then we have, um, no business in the right of way. Uh, the mobile food vendors have to be parked on paved or other approved surfaces with appropriate spill control and counter plan. Um, and so those other approved surfaces could through the site plan process be gravel or something else as long as they have the right spill control things in place. Can't set up in an ADA parking. Um, you can't be in the way of things and you can't cause danger. Um, more about fire lane distance, uh, food vendors only, pedestrians only, drive through is prohibited, and then a five foot clear space shall be maintained around all of them. So last time we had some conflicting information, so it's just five foot. And then minimum setbacks for the zoning districts would apply that would carry over to your site plan. So if you're in TBC, you may have a different front yard setback than Running Hill. And so you would just conform to that, like a normal commercial development. What, um, uh -huh. um, the five foot clear space should be maintained around the mobile food vending unit. Does that mean that there should be 10 feet or can each mobile unit can they use claim the five feet? I think it should be, I would interpret it as 10 feet. So you eat. All right, so I, then I think you need to, because okay. otherwise they could say, well, that five feet, uh, this five sure. feet there, and then the other one says, yeah, that's, you know, five, five feet, feet there. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, you, don't you all think that 10 feet is a minimum five? I mean, yeah, five feet but, but it is five and five. Yeah, okay. So okay. I, might, I might change the word the okay. to each. Yeah, each, exactly. Yeah, got yeah. it, around each. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. And then we have the parking. So we have a minimum of one dedicated parking space shall be provided per mobile food vendor pad site and shall not occupy the minimum required parking spaces for any other use on the site. So say our favorite example on the vine, <laughs> uh, they have parking required for their shop and their store, but they have excess parking that they could put for the mobile food vendor. They so chose. And then ADA parking shall be provided that would just conform to our parking requirements. And parking requirements shall be subject to planning board site plan. So if you have 10 pad sites, you have to be able to have a dedicated 10 spaces for that. And those spaces theoretically would be for the employee or whoever was right. operating. At what point does the, does the EV? Uh, you know, that's a great point. I would not make this have to do EV parking unless it was part of a different development. You know, a, a shopping center or something. And if Walmart were doing, wanted to put, yeah. well, even like if Walmart wanted to put it in, they would use existing parking spaces, so it wouldn't. But if somebody came in and said, "I have this big grand scheme to open," you know, twenty thousand square foot of retail, and then I want to open up a food truck court, and I'm going to have a pad site for you know a yoga place, their whole parking lot would have to consider EV, right? Yeah. But I would be ready. Yeah, I wouldn't. Well, the fact that you are backing down on permanent electrical, I mean, backs down on the EV piece too. Yeah, I wouldn't make this have to put an EV parking for those 10. That's yeah, I, but that's one of the things yep. that, that we need to well, that add that clarity. In. Add it. That's a great point. <clears throat> All right. Can so I? If, 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 oh. I, I have a question. And I want to develop. Uh -huh. And let's say I'm going to have six dedicated spots mm -hmm. with with the actual vendors located. But at any given time, I may not be using all of those spots. Mm -hmm. Namely, four vendors. I'm still required to have the six. Everything is keyed off the number of pad sites, yes. not necessarily the number of actual vendors. Correct. Yes. But the vendor itself doesn't obviously have to own, could own the site. It does sure. not have to be anybody. You can move them. Yes, they can change. I, desi I develop it by site approved, and then I enter into whatever leases or licenses Correct. with various vendors who then bring their vehicles and park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the summer, you might have an influx of ice cream vendors or however you want to do it. And then, you know, in the fall, it might be different. Um, but that would be totally up to you. You would just be getting your pad sites approved through planning for not how the vehicles look or anything like right. that. Um, there's just a more location. Right. Yeah. So the, the land trust two weeks ago, we have our annual broad term dinner. Mm -hmm. And up until last this year, it was a sit down, sir, blah, blah, blah. This year we had, um, I guess it was three food trucks mm -hmm. that were parked in the rear of the barns and front turn. Would that fall into this? So now we get into licensing. All right. And that would not. Okay. <laughs> so this is the zoning part and the site plan part. Are you all generally comfortable with, you know, the process for an ordinance change? It'll go to ordinance committee. Mm -hmm. And then it'll go to town council for a public hearing, and then it goes to planning board for a public hearing and input, and then it goes back to town council. Um, and I have seen you know tweaks along the way with our process, so I I feel pretty comfortable with what we have to move it forward. Are you all generally okay with this part, Robin? Robin did you still have? Oh, I'm question? sorry, Robin. Yeah. Um. Can I go to the third bullet in the performance standards? Yes. Um. I'd just like to add um, where it says mobile food vendors shall be parked on paved or other pa approved surfaces with a appropriate spill control and countermeasures plan with specific with um, sufficient materials to address typical spills. 
<clears throat> before they leave the 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 vent the court or whatever we want them to address and and fix the spill before it leaves the site kind of a thing okay One, um, Robin, anything else? That's it, thank you. Um, Pache Rick's um, comment, I think, and this came up last time too, I think there has been some confusion on whether this is in any way impacts the event licensing right. that takes place here. Um, and, and what Rick described as the event, that we're not talking about events no. on this one. And I think as, as we go to warden's committee and as we go to the town council, we should be very explicit about that because people hate it. Sure. I, and I'll just go to the end. It's at the end. Um, While you're doing it's that, on the last page under I, I sent you two a year to talk about this <laughs> and we'll get to you. Yo, that's fine. So, the license requirement again, this will be operated through the town clerk's office and town council approval. So, there's a, applicability and then the definitions are the same. Um, the application process, it follows our typical license process. Um, you know, health certificates, things like that, and then a notarized affidavit from the property owner uh, for that specific court. Uh, they have to show, so the mobile food vendor, so now we're talking about Porsche's uh, food truck, she will have to show the site plan that got approval of my little court when she gets her license, part of that. And then this was a big one, if there's a commissary kitchen, uh, that has to be identified because that was a concern about uh, from the fire department and public safety that we have a lot of food trucks that are using commissary kitchens. They also have to be inspected. And that, so this is just licensing. Okay, so if I use a commissary kitchen in South Portland that I'm operating in Scarborough, I still have to demonstrate that that commissary kitchen in South Portland is licensed and inspected in South mm -hmm. Portland. Uh, so then she does stuff at her location, but then she travels around like that. And as long as she can show, as long as that person can show <coughs> proof that that's been inspected, they're all set. Um, and then a public hearing is required. So this is our normal license. The town council will hold a public hearing for all new applications for mobile food vendor licensing. It's the same as we do for our restaurants and things like that. Um, and so it's just the initial, the town clerk can renew them. So we have it set up that same way. So there's no second public hearing. Right, unless there's an issue. Okay. We've got a $200 renewal fee. And again, this all really just is the same license information we use now. <coughs> and for license posting, they have to show that. These are the general requirements, and then there's specifics about equipment. Um, you know, you have to, the cart has to be attended. There's a maximum size. I don't know if this is really necessary, but it's something I found in another community. Up to 30 feet long, 13 feet tall, eight feet wide. Seems pretty reasonable for a big size. Seems big, right? So it yeah. seems really fine, like as a maximum. Um, one question before that: um, the renewal fee of two hundred dollars, and presumably is there a fee on initial application? Um, there is, and I think that's. I think it's probably the same. Um, what did I do for? Yeah, there, there, there wasn't the. Um, Was it just the reference uh, that it'll be set it by the yeah. Yeah.
Not sure what's standard for um, ordinances, um, uh, Rachel, but I think up to and and no more than are mathematically equivalent. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I was, that's always just wondering yeah. how the, the language works. Yeah. They mean the same thing, I'm just not sure how we use what term is typical for what is. That's the size of a big RV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Might have said, shall be no more than the average state. Again, mathematically, it's, it's all the same. It's just be small, it can't be large. Yep. No more than 30 feet long, 13 feet tall, and eight. Okay. It might use the number eight rather than the word eight. Just Usually when I do these, I'll do the number and the yeah. number, you know. So these are aimed at the actual vendor. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So it's really a two step process. Yeah. <laughs> I get site plan review and approval for my site, mm -hmm. of which I have six paths. Mm -hmm. And then I enter into agreements with vendors who have to come in and give them license. Yes. Okay. And so, and, or, or alternatively, a vendor could not get licensed, but in Scarborough, they would be limited to only doing event specific. That makes sense. Yeah. A single vendor. Right. So, yeah. so the end, the exemption to here covered the yeah. issue that I raised mm -hmm. earlier. Exactly. Time, Roger and Farm is having a wedding right. on Saturday afternoon. And they're the bride and groom want five. Those don't fall in the Those don't fall in this. And they could go and get somebody who's licensed in Portland to come and do the afternoon in Scarborough. And they don't have to come to Scarborough and get a separate. Right. The only thing, just I don't want to get ahead of us, but on the exemptions, uh -huh. I don't know enough about how, you know timing and stuff. But it could possibly be, I suppose, that somebody brings their unit the night before the event. Yeah. But it's not operational. Right. It's just hanging. Up. And and maybe we need to be talking about. I don't know, but you know. Won't, op won't be operation. Right. You, you see what I mean? Because mm -hmm. they bring us the night before. Yeah. The wedding is from whatever, three to 10. Mm -hmm. And that's when it's doing its thing. And they may or may not take it off the site till the fall. Sure. Yeah. They're not going to meet the 15 hour. Yeah, I was going to propose make that 36 hours for exactly that reason. Yeah. Um, just because. Yeah, because presumably they might, if they have everything. Material in the refrigerator for the next day, it would want to be kind of running that. Yeah, exactly. In the, the, at the broad turn dinner a few weeks ago, they actually showed up about an hour before the event started. And they were pretty much left when it was done, but maybe depending on the nature of the event. So, anyway, 15 hours later, you know. Because I've done I've, weddings where uh, they're doing barbecue, and so they're, you know, they have to show up to start it early. Yeah. 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 It's not so possible somebody might have a two day event. That's, so that's, sure. that's kind of what I was thinking too. Okay. Or, um, yeah. Yeah, and in that instance, they get their event permits and things like that. Yeah, so, and that's what we've been doing now. We've been allowing them those special, but we've, we've this is sort of our policy that we have in place. Yep. So I'm just codifying that. You okay. could just strike that. I think it's important to have a time frame. That way, if somebody is going to exceed that, then they need to ask the question. Correct. I think having the policy kind of sets the expectation. Again, this only applies to multiple. Wait, licensing is going to apply it to anyone? No, it's not. It's just that. Does just a vendor need to do anything? Permit wise. They're just and right now we don't. Right. So, 
Maybe we'll get to we can Maybe ask our state. guest to answer some of these questions. Yeah. We, should, we, we should clarify. So I, I do think they have to have a catering license, but that's already established. So not from, from the, the town. town. Not, yeah. Uh, yeah, from the town. It's a catering license from the town. Maybe a room. I'm not sure. Yeah. Look, we yeah, we'll check on that. So this brings me up to a good one. We have Maine Health always has a food truck on their site mm -hmm. for their employees. So they would be there longer than 36 hours, so they're not exempt. But what Maine Health should do is come before us and do a site plan and get a yeah. license for a Which means they could have two or three And then trucks. they can have a couple, and they would just do a simple site plan that says, we put them here, here's where they hook up. They might not like it because they would have to provide electrical hookup because they probably are using generators. But that would be something that would but I mean, if, if they're doing that semi -permanent, effectively permanent, mm -hmm. um, I mean that they will they'll have more success attracting vendors if they have um, uh, permanent power. Right. And and, and, and like, I, I think that's a relatively straightforward conversation with Maine Health interacting with, and it'll be good for you and for the, for the town. Thanks, but isn't isn't there a difference between Maine Health? Having a vendor come to the site only to serve employees at the site, or a, a vendor who comes to a construction site and serves only the workers versus well, something what we, where the general public can. We tried to, so I had it written, so we had an allowance for those last time. It was the food truck site mobile food vending site and it had a very it didn't have to go through site plan process and I did that for that exact like the main health or the construction site we I think we got a little bit confused with it and so we said we'll strike that and just go forward with this one but we could very easily with through this process we could very easily maybe get to the point where we could add that back so Maine Health wouldn't get a site plan. They would just get their um, license for the site. For so one, because those guys are just coming for the lunch time. Mm -hmm. And, and they're the leaving again, yeah. so they're not on site. Well, they ask it a different way. I assume the Maine Health site has site plan approval. Some got site plan approval. Mm -hmm. Did they at that time designate no. a particular area? No. Do they now have to come back and get amended site plan? If we just adopt this ordinance, yes. So they have to come back and say that truck that's going to vendor is going to come to the site to serve our employees is going to be located here mm -hmm. and here and show them the site. And they would have to meet the performance standards for the permanent electrical or temporary, however, electrical connection, no generators. They would have to, I think that's probably the only one. Well, that makes sense. That's so they would that. have to do that. The way that I read this too is that they could, in theory, apply to be the exempted location. Say again. Well, we see the applicability at the um, uh, clause A. Mobile food vending may only occur in an approved mobile food vendor court or on exempted locations. That was actually quite, what, what do we mean by exempted locations? Because um, in theory, I guess they could ask for to be exempted. I, I think one of the things that came up last time is that even if, if they're going to have something there semi permanently and they want to be exempted from the broader site plan review of OS, the town still has an interest in the fact that. You've got somebody who has potential grease spills, who has things like that, and, and, and we would want some oversight over that. And the fact that it sounds like we don't have oversight over that right now, it may help maybe a gap. Um, so if the exemption process allows the town to go through and, and establish, you know, fire inspection, um, uh, uh, the, the, the spill remediation um, uh, uh, things are in here as well, then that's okay. And we can go through that on, on, on case by case exemption process. Well, there's no exemption process. Well, that, which leads me to believe what is an exempted location? So, an exempted part. location would be where are you? Oh, a. Where? No, I'm A. I'm on look it over. Oh, thank you. So, 
exempted locations would be these locations that are exempt. Yes. So as so mobile food vendors located on private property, the, the wedding event, uh, a private catered event is an event that sells food beverage for a limited time. So town issued mobile food vendor, mobile food vendor license is not required to the catered. And then mobile food vendors participating in town sponsored events are not required. So all of our town, like um, Sustainable Scarborough Day and uh, Summer Fest, those mobile food vendors would be exempt. But and I would say on applicability, it's not that they are exempted locations. They are subject to the exemptions under section S. I like that, yeah. Because they're not a location. And in that case, do we want to give Maine Health and Out by saying a private private catering um, consists of selling food and beverages for a specific um, time, not open to the general public and only to attend these events. And that was the uh, original agreement with Maine Health that that's why it had to be behind the building. Right. That, um, yep. You can't attract the public to this. It's not a public. Um, well, it's not just uh, attracting. At that point, you probably have to say, you have to show your main health ID right. in order to order a hot dog. Um, but then if, if we intend to have this exemption allow main health to continue to operate, then we have to remove the limited time mm -hmm. aspects and things like that. And, and if, main health, does the um, does the vendor pull in every day and pull out every day? I think they're pulling in the thing out. So All right, how many there. days a week? Five days, seven days? Yeah, and I think it's different vendors each day. Okay. So but we, we should find we'll so check with Brian. I, I don't yeah, think so it, 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 with that sort of consistent use in the same place, I would start to worry about things. Yeah, I think they should have to go through the site plan. I, I we, agree. We just get the get their little site plan. Again, if, it, if it's five days a week, somebody's coming in and coming out, five days a week is still gonna attract rodents is still good. Well, and there's nothing to prevent me from going and getting a hot dog. Well, and that's just And we we have seen that. We've seen some of the vendors advertise. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, we'll be in the main uh, Yeah, they'll have it on their Instagram feed or whatever. Yeah, and, and that's... Uh, and, and so if they, again, if we intend to put main health into a tighter box, mm -hmm. so in effect, you know, you can only sell to main health employees when they show their ID, and they don't show an ID, and if main health doesn't want to do that, then, nope, sorry, you need to cycle. Basically, you're asking them to do a food court for one pet. Yeah. Yeah, in which case. Well, not yeah. only because you've got multiple vendors. Not only really different than a site plan showing where the uh, trash bins are going to be able to right. Yeah. right. And I'm sure that when May House got their site plan approval for that project, nobody thought about this. Yeah. So if you look at the approved site plan, it probably doesn't show is vendor. This the, is, is, is this at the new building or the, the one it's at the, the administration the oh. center? Not at that. Yeah. So no, that was approved so long ago that. But that that's different. In other words, that that's a site plan issue, right? So. Well, it, it is if we only use what is here. If we use what I had last time that allowed you to have a food court or food site, that was one, and it was just a license, and it was an acknowledgement. It was a really easy. Um, take it to the town clerk, quick planning. Yep, you're good. You got parking, great. Have a nice day. Well, let's That's take, it, let's take it. Of an example. Um, the new uh, Acura site mm -hmm. on the corner of Ivis and King. So they get done and they're going to have a grand open. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three day event. And they're going to have all the beautiful cars up there. And the general public can come and mm -hmm. see the facility, and they're going to have a food truck there. Does that fall into any of this? They would be um, the one time event, event for yeah, 36 yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah. okay. Even yeah. though it's open to the public. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Or Cabela's wants, they used to have that touch truck mm -hmm. thing. He hasn't done it in a long time, but they have a bunch of trucks and things that the kids can come. And they have a food truck there for a day or two. Mm -hmm. That's a one time. That's a one event. time. Event. Okay. Yeah. All right. But if Cabela's wanted to set aside 10 spaces for a food truck every court, day, every day, day yeah, they can come in and do a cycling. And, and yeah. my, my thing is, main health is slipping through a crack here where yeah. it's, it's, it's effectively permanent, but it's one vehicle. Exactly. And, and to me, that 
should fall under this. Yeah. So um, if there's a way to, to make that clear um, and get rid of the two or more, or clarify that, that, that this also applies to situations like Bay Health, which is only one site pad, um, that would be good. Because it does feel like Main Health is probably out of what we want from Alex. It sounds like a problem. Basically, what you're saying is anyone who wants even the rotating set of trucks coming through, you still need to apply for a pad yep. as, a, as a permanent food court, even if it's for one pad, yep. with the understanding that you're going to have a rotation of, of vendors. Yeah, exactly. I really. Because it does get to the health issues, it gets to the mitigation issues as far as spills. Who's going to be responsible? In that case, you've got, you know, you've got a court court owner. <laughs> and if it's I, truly private, I'm a little. I'm just going to say I'm a little leery about it knocking down to one. I'd rather put it back the way we had it before because if every business in the world's like, oh yeah, I'm a food truck court now. I got one food truck outside. All I have to do is. Well, Dude, I, you still have the issue of bathrooms. And again, the private thing is in, in main health, if they want to limit it to employees, it's like, well, what are you bathrooms? Well, they'll have IDs. They just swipe their ID and they go to the bathroom the back door. Um, and the general public has to pee in a bush. Um, that seems. But we don't want main. Do you want main health to put up a porta potty? Because um, if they're a food truck port, they'll have to bring in porta potties. That well, was my whole well, in, in my, thing my, my, with limiting the one. But, the other, but if they're there and they have and their employees have access to an inside toilet, that's a permanent. Yeah, and, and, and again, I'm, what I want main health to do is either have a porta potty and allow the general public to come in, or prohibit the general public from coming in. Show your badge in order to buy food, and now, and now, okay, you're a private event. You're, you are a a a, a, um, a private event. Um, we won't limit your food, but if you are private. It's just like located, it's just like having a barbecue. So can a vent just be there? We could, I mean, well, the it, way it, we kind of do it now is the event is that they're open. And, and that's what I, I, I think a private- um, no, a, a, They put up a sign that, that says um, employees only. Yeah. Okay. Private outdoor catering may include events or, or an ongoing outdoor Food access for employees or other members. maybe an employee maybe yeah. there's a fourth bullet and it's uh, a yeah. private catered like something for that, employees that's, only. That's I'd what rather I'm do that than open the door for a, like one food. Which is fine, but if, if but again, and that's the conversation with main, uh, main, main health, which is listen, if you want to have food trucks here and they're going to publish on Instagram and they're going to bring in outside yeah. traffic, you really need to be a site planner. You need to really need right. to if this is really just an employee benefit. Then put up a sign saying employees health employees only. Like um, yeah, and Bob's your uncle. I like that. Okay, anybody else? Before I'd like to hear from our <laughs> guests because I think they can add to this discussion. So unless anybody else wants to has anything to say, if you two would I introduce yourselves and can I just um, oh, sorry. I do need I would like to ask. We, you all would are comfortable making a recommendation to move it forward, or if you want to come back. I would to like to hear from the people okay. who actually do this stuff, Perfect. and then we can talk. So, if you could introduce yourselves, um, Selena Daniel. I'm from. I represent M and R Holdings. Jake Meshu. I represent M and R Holdings. And M and R Holdings is the holding company for Crossroads Development. It's covered out. Oh, okay. Good. Good. So. <laughs> Tell us how this works. <laughs> <laughs> this is new to us as well. Um, so we've gone through the process with um, Autumn as well, getting the work in hopes to get this passed um, because we'd like to do a temporary amenity space for the residents as well as the surrounding general public. So I am. Um, we're good with, I sent a couple comments to Autumn this morning. It was regarding the permanent electrical and restrooms because eventually we'd like a permanent amenity space so that that would be programmed a little differently. Um, it, you had some questions with regards to catering license. I believe, isn't that a state run? And that's what you had mentioned um, in your 
bracket here, your statement. Yeah, I do have a question with regards to use of fuel powered <coughs> generators. It's what if they're using propane, say it's a hot dog cart mm -hmm. and they want to use propane to cook their hot dogs or whatever they I, I guess that's, I, I just want to make sure that we're not restricted. Yeah, I think there's two lanes there. I think yeah. there's grills are typically propane fired. And I think, and I'm not positive on this, I'd like to get more clarity on it, but down on the east end, down by the water, where they have that little food truck court in Portland, I believe, I believe they have propane they fire propane. generators there. So I, I just, I think we consider that for, and it might not be something that Don's, I think it might be something more for the one-stop shop person. Um, but is if it's a if it's a propane fired grill, that's not the same as a propane fired generator. Correct. The grill yeah. operates separately. No, you're right. right. Yes. Yep. I just wanted to make sure that there was. Oh yeah, that's kind of what we're getting. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just, just a little. I bit. think it's more about the generator, generator itself. The noise. Okay. And All right. Noise impacts, yeah. but don't right. these trucks also have lights, internal lights, and that yeah. needs power? Oh, yeah, right? yeah. But yeah. you still to yeah. operate a grill. Uh, you would have a propane tank. Right. Instance, but I mean, does the truck, it. this suggests that the truck has to plug in to any permanent electrical, like a like camping site or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Is that how it works? Uh, I would say, well, here's a good question. So, for you guys that went to the conservation there, yep. how did those, how are they plugged into any I actually those? don't remember. I think there may have been a power cord from the barn. From the barn. But I don't know. I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. I've seen it both ways for some of the food courts I've been to around yeah. New England. Um, typically, we all like to see some sort of temporary permanent power. Um, but I think there is those times where propane generators would be useful, especially for these one-time shops. I'm not sure how many that does it, or excuse me, Green Health. Um, I'm sure they have generators. Uh, and that is probably a generator. Do we prohibit that in the proposal? Fuel. We're, yeah. we're, we're, I'm trying to find it. Again, it's in the You've got a difference between generator and actually kitchen equipment because you can have propane to operate a kitchen it's equipment the first grill. Yeah. It's okay. different than the generator. Use a fuel bar. We might want to think about that one. I mean, do we care? Well, noise. I mean, what is, <laughs> I, mean really, I just want to make, make sure that I don't want to go around. Uh, sometimes, you know, make lists uh, that we don't really even care about. We just make well, the, the, the problem with the fuel uh, operated generators is the problem of a uh, spill. If you're operating, for instance, a grill, you've got your tank, but if you're refilling a generator because it's being used over hours, you've got the chance for a spill, you've got a chance for all kinds of things happening. Thank you. What's the risk with propane? I kind of looked to Robin for that. That's a fire department issue. Well, so yeah, yeah. Robin, can you repeat that? We just missed it. That's a fire department issue. That's that's like you got to evacuate the place if you have a propane leak. It's quite a bit more um, harmful. So that's really a fire department kind of emergency response question. But at the same time, propane is not designed to leak when you're changing tanks. That would be like a, a punctured tank or something, right? Well, are we talking about propane tank on the truck that powers the generator on the truck? Yes. That that's what we're talking yes. about. We're not yes. talking about a big tank. Right. right. No. No. All these lines, yeah. But there's no. still a tank of propane somewhere. Right. But I have a tank of propane on my home generator and nobody can you know, I'm yeah, yeah, really about that. that. But, but that's the thing. I, I think the spill issue, when I get the, 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 the spill issue comes from a diesel generator where you have to fill up with diesel. With propane, you're switching hoses. Right. And the only way you get a spill, quote unquote, is you puncture the tank. Yeah. Because you. I guess we would really just want clarification on the word fuel. What if we just said each mobile food vendor pad shall have access to electrical connections? And then we just ended it. And each food vendor does things the way they do things because they're all equipped. Yeah. Some have a grill and some have grease and they right. handle that. Yeah. And some yeah. just make yeah. sandwiches right. and some might not. So I guess I would say are we getting too weedy in their business for well them? I we go back to our, our guests. Because they're gonna be inspected. So yeah. your if, if this goes forward, the 
site plan for that section of is going to show food court area of some sort, and it's going to show maybe 10, 8, whatever paths. Was the plan that there would be a electrical supply, you know, panel or something where each truck could plug in? Yes, I think I think so. Say we had five pads or eight pads or whatever, and maybe we had a bigger event where we're gonna have a couple more food trucks come in. We have designated pads, and they have propane generators. I just think about it like in the grand scheme of things when you know how these will change as they go and we might have two people in, might have four people in, but maybe we only have six pads. I think about it as a cost then yeah. to the person developing the food core. I'm thinking, is it, would, it, would it be an issue if we simply didn't allow gasoline, kerosene, and diesel generators? I because think, I think it's a spill issue that, that right. came up last time. Yes, um, exactly. Whereas if they're using propane, I don't think we have an issue. So maybe it's... Okay. Liquid petroleum products, or what? there's a there's a term there. I just okay. Well, is that the issue, or is the issue having to have an electrical connection to that side? No, I think that was the issue. I, I think the issue is really it's related really to environmental. Right. right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, guess they, and I think about it for like main health, for instance. Is they're kind of that'd be kind of a struggle for them to put in permanent power or a temporary measure if their vendor has a propane generator and he's there for two hours. I'm just looking at it more broadly, not just for the downs, but for yeah. you know, towns as a whole. I mean, my inclination would be to say that the owner of the food port shall provide electrical connections mm -hmm. with respect to any vendor who doesn't otherwise have their internal generator. I had to find it because I was thinking this is more for voice. You know, generators and voice. What if, okay, so what if for performance standards, it says each mobile food vendor pad side shall have access to electrical connections? If, and if, then if, in, the, yeah, in the licensing, it says fuel, um, petroleum yeah, powered yeah. generators are not allowed. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I think. But, and it's separated. Because you, so you guys are doing, here's an electrical connection you can plug into, worst case, best case scenario. But my truck uses a propane generator. I'm all set to get my license. But if I use a diesel generator, town clerks can say, no, you can't use that. And then I'm going to have to come up with another alternative. Oh, well, I'm going to the downs. I'm going to have electricity. Cool. Yeah. So what about if we separate the two? Because it's sort of in the weeds for the site plan. Right, because right. right. they, they yeah. don't have any okay. control over it. Yeah. And, and, and in terms of generator noise, to me, that's a self-regulating issue. Yeah. If your generator is really loud, you don't want to come to your food truck. Well, they typically, you don't see it all the time, but uh, they have uh, noise shield around them. Yeah, exactly. It's like, a, like an empty generator. generator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and they mitigate it right. that way. Um, where, where this, because yeah, if you just had a loud Honda generator sitting down on the side, <laughs> yeah. why do I want to clean around it? Some of these, I don't know anything about these trucks, but I will I suspect me. I mean, in front of one of my colleagues just bought a brand new F-150 Ford. Mm -hmm. And when he turns the engine on, it generates power and he can plug his house in. Mm -hmm. And he has to have a separate generator. Do these Trucks, if you run the engine, does it generate? I believe some of them have solar on top of the roofs. I see that, I've yeah. seen that before. Um, I mean, I just don't want to have the owner of the site have to go to the expense I, of providing power if the trucks that come have their own internal power system. But I know we do because the sites are going to be maybe not in their situation, but they're going to be more designed as permanent. They do need electrical for lights and things like that for eating areas, you know. So I agree on from their perspective. They go to the planning board to get approval for the site. Uh-huh. They get it all done. And it meets all the site for the for the court. For the court. Yeah, for the court. Then their individual vendors who are going to go to their site either on a daily basis or it's going to be open up, they have to go through. The the license. License. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And they have to be inspected and they have to have their, you know, all their state licenses. And, and, and they'll be told, no, you can't use a generator that has to that uses you know, and, because we're worried about schools. And each court owner could even have more strict requirements. Yeah, we're not worried. You could yeah. say, we don't want any cookies. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, I mean, you can have some food. Yeah. 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 But if they, if, if Crossroads, I, I haven't seen the site plan for the There's no site plan. Well, I, I envision this empty little town center, a little park, and whatever it is, if they decide to have an open house some Saturday, to introduce the public to this new area with all these fancy restaurants and stuff. That would that would be an event. That's that would be event. a one-time yeah. event. Yeah. And the, then other than state license and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. They don't have to go through anything. Nope. Okay. Right. That's just like the accurate guide. Yeah. All right. I'll but if you wanted to set up a food court for uh in the uh you know between the residential and commercial area because you wanted to offer a variety of food offerings or even a on a regular, taste of on a regular basis, basis then you would want a food okay, court. And what I understand for Crossroads is that you're kind of looking at a bridge. You're envisioning a town center which will have restaurants and things like that, but there'll be a period of time for a number of years where that's being developed. You want to provide an amenity both for the, a taste of what will come from the town, but also an amenity for the people people who already have housing. Yeah, yes. And yes. it's basically an activation to what's coming. Yeah, to get, yeah. You know, to yeah. get the excitement going, get people down there. Yep. Um, yeah. Which is not an event specific. Correct. To that yeah. it's, Correct. Not a, it's not the accurate dealers um, doing yeah. a two-day weekend right, program. Yeah. Yeah. So, sort of like do you have right? any other yeah. input or comments for us that help us? Um, I don't, did you have any speech? The only other question I have, which is not going to help anybody, but um, <laughs> you should keep that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I didn't hear well, no, it. Gonna, yeah, I think it's going to help everyone. No, I shouldn't say it like that. It's going to help everyone. Um, <laughs> in terms of schedule for like hitting the ordinance committee and then getting to town council, like what do you guys envision for that? So I'm I'm asking for a recommendation from this group today to yeah. move to ordinance committee on October 11th, I believe. And then if ordinance committee moves it forward, it would go to town council in November and then hopefully be done. And then it would theoretically best case go to planning board public hearing in December and be done in January. Okay. Sort of best case. Yeah. If I miss the October ordinance committee deadline, we're into the March and April. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. So I was like, don't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Adam, Adam, what, well, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Adam, well, well, I know we would typically like things to go to ordinance. Like I would be happy if we don't meet that deadline to sponsor, to get something directly to council, because I think just seeing today, all the work that's been done and the vetting that's happened, like, while I appreciate it going to ordinance with the two month delay we're going to see with new council coming on. I would hate to hold this up given that it's been really, really well vetted. So you're thinking it basically would go in parallel. Well, I prefer to go to ordinance if it can, if we can meet that deadline, but if for some reason things slow down or we can't, I just don't want the council turnover to be a delay. And I don't see any reason why it can't go to ordinance. If you guys voted out, um in the october meeting um so robin did you have your hand up did i see that yeah i just wanted to clarify that the onus for providing electricity to each site within the food court is the food court owners like yes. when he, when he or she goes to planning board they need to provide electricity or or a means for electricity. Is that correct? Correct. And I, I think the way that we talked through was that it might be that a food truck pulls up into one of those pads and doesn't need electricity because they got their own propane generator, et cetera. But they need but the the site still needs to, to have power available. And that's okay, part of so, the so so that therein is my question is if the individual vendor has their own generator? Are, are we still allowing them? We're allowing a propane generator, solar generators, but we are not allowing gasoline or diesel generators. We're moving that portion into the licensing requirements. Oh, we would still require that the food court vendor provide, provide, provide electricity. If somebody doesn't have power. power. Correct. Yes. It's still a, a plug. But so it's, like, or not. Okay. it's like when you go camping and you can plug in or if you have your own setup, you don't have to, but it's there for you if you if you need it. Great. Thank you. So let me 
couple things then. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, does anybody have any questions, further questions? I have for our yeah, I do. I do. I do. <laughs> okay. Let's let's start with, with Jean Marie. Yeah, um, having sat through food trucks in my past um, and on council and having it turned down, um, I, uh, this is a question. Karen, are you there? Karen Martin, are you Hi. there? I can't see who's everyone. Oh, sorry. I'm here. We're, We're in the corner. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Karen, when you talked to Setco, did you get the pushback from restaurant owners that we got before? Um, no, I think Setco was was fine with um, moving us forward with food trucks as we were um, earlier. I think the only thing Setco wanted was, hey, we should check in with restaurants. And and we have. We've sent a, a the ordinance as, as it was written last week. Um, we've sent that draft to restaurants. We'll send another draft. Um, we've only gotten one response. And, and basically the, the nature of that response is, well, I just want the food court to have some of the same, you know, responsibilities that restaurants have. Right. So right. And, and I think, and, and of course, when it was up before it was pre COVID and I think COVID's changed a lot of attitudes uh, regarding like outdoor dining and food trucks and, and whatever, whatever. Um, and the uh, the other, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, the beach communities were not, they didn't want food trucks anywhere near them. Uh, so the zoning, the way it's set up, I mean, can someone talk to me about that? Sure. So most of the beach communities are zoned R2 or RF. Um, okay. And this is not permitted. A food okay. Truck is not okay. And they, they have to go to planning board. And they have way. to go to planning so board. So somebody yeah. wanted, they could appear at planning board and say, this is why we're against this. So, yeah. Right. And that's, and I just wanted to bring those two because that's what I could think of as possible opposition. So I appreciate that. But I think to a certain extent that's outside the purview of what we're being asked to do. We're being asked to make a recommendation on the standards, if you will, that will apply to these things. If a number of restaurant owners show up at the council meeting and say, we think this is a bad idea because it's going to be competitive with us and we don't, that's that's not our goal. That's our no, goal. I know, but I have Karen here, so I thought I'd ask. And, and we want to we want to make sure that people know about it and feel comfortable with it, and um, and that's what we're doing. We're we're going to put that out again this afternoon. We did it last week, you know. So if there's something big that's that's out there, um, hopefully we're going to have it. Plus, I think we are going to try just to cross all the T's and dot all the I's to do an invitation to um, folks to come in and, and talk about. And talk about it just so we can hear if there's anything on people's minds. At, at the same time, we talked last time, we don't want to have restaurants in a position of vetoing future competition. Right. right. Uh, which is right. the danger on, on giving too much deference right. to that. No, we just want to know if you've got issues that we can um, deal with in the ordinance, then, then that's what we want to know. So, point one, any further questions for our guests or comments? I, I have a question. We're, say that we go in for four PAT sites for site plan. And all of a sudden, everything's booming, and we need four more. Please max it out. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'll just say, on, well, I mean, I don't know. It's time. I always tell so plan for is it an amended site? Is it an amended site plan, or is it something I could just write a letter and say we have the efficient, the sufficient bathroom, electrical, parking, parking? Just plan for. I think you'd have to show it. Yeah, I think you would plan. Yes. It. I mean, my my gut reaction says I would look at you and say prove it. Yeah, and if you've got four site pads and you want to add another four, you're doubling the size. Yeah. And I would look at you and say, "Show me, yeah, yeah. show me how it works." Or so I might, I might it phrase it more along the lines of, "You need to come back and get a yeah. site." Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I, 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 I would <laughs> probably, I would probably phrase it that way. <laughs> or what in your mind? That that mind like, that's what I would be thinking. That's what I might tell her. <laughs> no, I would definitely advise you max it out as many as you can. I just want to make sure. Yeah, just to be your, clear. So you yeah. don't have to come. Okay. I, I don't want, want to come back. <laughs> Not that I don't love coming back to the planning board. But that's wonderful people. <laughs> okay. Any other questions or comments for our guests? No. Um, also, thanks for your guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Second thing. Are you comfortable 
given what we've said today, to make revisions to this and then send it on. I am. Yes. Okay. And in, with those two questions, right? is, is the committee okay with vote. a vote that Autumn will, will move this along, taking into account the input from today's meeting? Well, I'd like, what I'd like to do is so move. If we get second, we can talk about it. Before. Okay. Well, I'll be trying because if somebody's in our company, we need But all right. So there's a motion. There's a motion to um, to give, to, to have Autumn incorporate the feedback from today's session in an updated ordinance to be passed on to the October ordinance committee um, on our behalf. Actually, a recommendation to the audience committee, but it's through the. Through yeah, the, is there a second to that motion? Okay. Any discussion? Robin, I think just raise your hand. Yeah. Can you just repeat the motion for me? So the motion is to ask <clears throat> Autumn or ask the planning staff to incorporate the comments from the committee's the discussion today. And upon incorporation, forward, um, we recommend that, that such ordinance be forwarded to the ordinance committee for their October meeting. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so there's a, there was a motion, a second, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor? Anybody opposed? Looks like it's unanimous. There you go. Leave it to you is when you feel on it. Okay. You need to send it back to us to look at it. I think our comments were pretty straightforward. I think so. We made some of them. That's very interesting. All right. It'd be helpful when you send it on just to forward to it. Yeah, definitely. And I'm going to, because I owe you something else that Rachel requested too. Tom, thank you for your. Thank you. Is, is there anybody else here right now, so. other than our guest who's on a Zoom public comment? Okay. If not, staff updates. So, yeah. So we planning for an agenda for next week is uh, that's Rachel's uh, staff updates. I don't know. I still I'm short of planner. <laughs> <laughs> I know, still the planning department is still just me. And, yeah. uh, and as she okay. said in the uh, department head meeting the uh, on Tuesday, don't mess with my whiteboard. It's, it's oh right, that is there. my world. So, so don't go in and erase anything on her board. All right. Anything else? No. <clears throat> okay, committee member updates. I, I do have one. Um, I I understand that the council may have adopted a um, a term limit for various committees. I don't know which one. Presumably, all committees. All, all committees under the so just that has an impact on us. I assume. It does. So we might want to. I, I it, am. Or there, there's a term limit. Limitation now in place, I guess, with respect to all town committees. Uh, sure. But what is it? it well, I don't know what it is. I just, <laughs> I just heard that it, it's adopted, but nobody it's, told me. It's effective January 1 of this year, and it applies to all committees. And then there's a term limit, a three, three year term limit. So if you've maxed out, you can finish out your existing term. No one's going to kick you off on January 1st. Um, so if you get reappointed, say in December, you can finish out that term, and then you have to take off a year. And get back. So it it's has so it's retroactive. It is. Okay. Yeah, it's quite. Um, it's a big deal for all of our committees. So we are. How does that affect our committee? Who's who's served three That's terms? That's what I'm getting at. Who, who gets? So that'll affect, um, and our committee it'll affect Alan Paul and then Rich May. Um, like in transportation committee, it'll affect Jen Ladd. Uh, conservation, it'll affect Pete Slavinsky next year. We'll so it would be good at the next meeting just to confirm. Yes, and, 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 Alan, and, and for Alan Parks and, and Conservation uh, Land Board, it immediately that, affects me. And you are, you will awesome. need to step down effective next time. My understanding is until you have a replacement, you can continue to serve. <laughs> there uh, is yeah. 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 Yeah.
update from the town clerk for all of our, because we have, we staff sustainability, transportation, conservation, long range. So we have uh, quite a bit of impact that we are concerned about. Well, you know, it's probably a good thing in one sense. Um, you know, well, there is institutional memory that sometimes is lost, but so yeah. Yeah. Well, on some of these more technical committees, it's, it's a really scary thing because there's not just a plethora of technically skilled folks applying to be on our committees. So. Some of the more dull ones, it's about getting people to apply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be the there case. Are now, now, I think. <laughs> okay, any further committee? Yes. Um, I wanted to talk about the planning board. We yes. did a site walk uh, of the downs. Um, and Autumn is going to send you, uh, I guess, electronic version of this really pretty, uh, very good um, map of what's been built uh, is on the books uh, for the uh, for the downs. They spent a lot of time really paying attention to all of the projects, the environmental permitting history, gravel wetlands, and stream restoration project that's been going on. One of the did you walk the whole down? Uh, we, we, I did not, I did not, more, let me put steps. it that way, Tom Hall drove the bus, <laughs> um, but we had quite a few people there who were not just planning for it, we had folks from other committees, uh, we had folks from the town council, we had residents, uh, we had folks from SEDCO, uh, and I think it was very well received, uh, we went to, we stopped at four sites, uh, and took a look at what was there, what was behind some of the thinking, why the site was developed this way, um, what, for instance, this gravel wetland does, how it affects the rest of the site. Um, I think it was very effective. One of the, a couple of the questions that we get on the planning board from public comments are concerns about um, trails. There's supposed to be trails. Where are the trails? Well. This map does a, a really good uh, job in out, outlining some of those trails. Uh, and for your information, those trails that are existing or proposed um, total 22,708 uh, linear feet. In other words, three miles of trails through that whole project, a chunk of uh, which have already been built. Um, they, we also get questions about open space, uh, and right now there's required for the, um, for the space, the dedicated open space, uh, in terms of what has been built, um, it's 20 acres, uh, excuse me, 20 acres are required, uh, in terms of what has been built or what's on the, what's on this map, uh, and what has been provided is 94 acres. So it really is good at outlining some of the questions that folks have raised at public comment. Um, I urge you to take a look at it, just hang on to the map so that as people start to talk, you can take a look at where the town center is proposed. You can take a look at what's on the books, what's going to be built, um, what we still have to make decisions on. Um, and uh, I thought uh, Dan Bacon and his team did a really good job. Uh, Drew Gagnon uh, was fascinating with his fascination with uh, the sewer pump station, um, which evidently is, 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 is aesthetically pleasing and the only one like it uh, in the town. So, um, it was a uh, it was a good experience and it helped um, put in perspective um, what we're now uh, on the planning board, what we will be seeing coming to us as we start to see more of the um, more of the town center. We will have a workshop next Monday, um, five o'clock. At five o'clock, uh, going over some of this and going over more about the town center. Um, what we have on the agenda for the planning board um, is one item. So I, it's going to be the lightest. And Autumn's already jinxed this, so I don't mind saying it. It's going to be the lightest planning board we've ever had. 
Um, but we will have a good hour and a half to go through uh, and really to take a look at um, what's what's uh, going to be on the books soon. Regina, um, the, the, the comp plan talks a lot. Talks a lot about the idea of having better through street connections, especially in the town center. Right? Does the does the, the, the Downs plans right now have greater connections to the northeast into the um, into the uh, rest of the town center, or how are we? How's the current thinking for traffic and, and, and pedestrian connectivity to the rest of the town? To the rest of the town? <laughs> yeah, to the northeast specifically, kind of moving up towards uh, Oak Hill. Um, There's actually a prohibition to connect to Sawyer. That's what I'm. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just so, internal. When yeah. we when we get the last comment, yeah. there was a fair amount of opposition to us recommending that there be a connection from that side of this project to Sawyer. Because one thing on that one, that was discussion of yeah, the right. history. But. Right now, the, the thought uh, on the, in terms of what's on the books in terms of the planning uh, is that Route 1, uh, once Market Street on Hygus Parkway is done, uh, Route 1 entrance really will be residential. Uh, and then the town center entrance, in, the set, in effect, uh, will be to the Hygus Parkway, and then the Innovation District uh, will be through the uh, through Payne Road. Now, uh, folks would use, you know, whatever road they feel like. Yeah, um, but what's going on in slowly in terms of the, the Route One is a lot of traffic calming measures through the residential area, uh, so that people are going to, won't use it as a speedway to get themselves to the town center. It'll be a lot easier to go up highways. The reason I asked the question about the connection to the Northeast is, is and I, I remember those conversations on the comp plan, it does remain um, a tension within our comp plan for us as a committee, because in other, in other um, circumstances, other forums, we're recommending the town no longer have these sort of dead end develop, um, uh, street developments, even if they were built that way for people like cul-de-sacs and to start to remove those over time to create more of a interconnected, pedestrianizable um, a set of streets. And we're not going to have a street because, again, it was met with some displeasure by some residents on Scarborough, I swear. Are there plans for pedestrian connections, uh, bike, bike trails or trails? There's, there's already one. Uh, is, is, will there be more than one or is it just the one? Uh, just the one at this point. There is one... Um, I can't remember the name of the street, but it goes out directly onto Sawyer Road uh, right before the park. Do you remember the Pacer? Yes. I, I think yeah. it's a Pacer. Is it Hackamore? Yeah, Hackamore across the Pacer. Pacer. Yeah. Yep. And, and that goes out um, through another development, um, basically across from the right onto right onto Sawyer. Is that the Sawgrass Road? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which I think was built since the comp yes. plan was latest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's just something for us to watch for. For um, again, to be consistent with the principles that we put in the comp plan fairly broadly. Um, just want to make sure that connectivity is, is front and center for our thing. Rick John has his hand. Oh, John. Yep. Yep. I just wanted to um, share. Uh, you might have heard at a council meetings, I know some of you on the planning board, that some of the residents have brought forward concerns about the light industrial zoning. So I am meeting with some of those residents next week to kind of look at the ordinance, get their feedback. And I would like to work with town, town staff after that to kind of share that feedback and get some alignment and then potentially come back to this group with some suggestions to get feedback as well. So I did mention to Autumn to talk to the chair to see if there's an opportunity to plan for this in the future. Um, but I feel like it's important that we bring something to you guys to react to, not just have an open-ended, take a look at the ordinance. So I just wanted to share that that's something that I'm working on that may come to this committee. John, is that concern with the light industrial zone writ large? Because there are lots of light industrial zones around town. There's only or, one light industrial zone. Really? There's industrial. There's industrial as well. Oh. As a okay. and, um, we're probably worse, but light industrial is only two rod and homes and across the street. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. That's it. That's okay. it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Anything else? We're a little bit past our 
Nothing from zoning. Um, transportation, I think, is we're still going through the um, what will hopefully be a transportation master plan, um, but that's still kind of in pro process. And obviously, a lot of discussion about the root one quarter, which we don't need to repeat. Um, it's already part of it. Um, and I'm trying to think. Um, no, that's, that should be good. Okay. You are going to send us that map. I am. Yes. Anything else from any community? If not, uh, uh, so, Chair will entertain the motion. So moved. Chair, is there a second? Is there further discussion? If not, those in favor, thank you. Those of you on Zoom, opposed? It's unanimous. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I remember.